Hello, everybody. This is your old pal, Uncle Hondo, your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer on Sports Illustrated and the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast with another co- complete recap of a Raiders loss, this time 27-20 to the Kansas City Chiefs. A very winnable football game. A very winnable football game. It, the Raiders tonight, it's the same story. I'm here at Allegiant, by the way, right in front of me is the field, so you're going to hear noise of cleanup and work being done by the workers. But once again, the story is the exact same. Player execution, turnovers, penalties, and head-scratching offensive play calling that, to be very kind, is head-scratching. To be brutally blunt, is terrible. And you know what? Early in the game, I was very complimentary to any of you that follow me on on Twitter to Luke Getze uh, because the team came out again on fire, very creative, took the lead on the Chiefs despite the first drive starting with an unforced error. And then it just fell off. I mean, literally, Brock Bowers and Jacoby Myers disappeared. And how in the world Brock Bowers is, I mean, Jacoby and himself, is arguably your best offensive player. He has been the entire preseason and up to now, but I think Brock Bowers is pushing him for that. I think that's totally fair. But how how do these men disappear? Two weeks in a row, you have a first and goal. Last week, first and second and third down, you throw all three. And then we all know what happened on fourth down. You get a penalty, so you got a kick. Here, First and goal, and you run it up the middle four times. I mean, I literally put on social media that the outside contain of the Chiefs was cheating before the play because they just knew the Raiders were going to go to the inside. They were open for a bootleg. They ran a play earlier in the game where Gardner bootlegged, and he could have either thrown to Brock or ran. That play right there, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting in the press box And it was extremely evident. And I'm not claiming to be a uh, worthy of a coordinator position in the National Football League. I mean, I certainly understand this game and have covered it for a long time, but it was absolutely pathetic. It was pathetic. Last drive of the game of the first half, I understand that drive. I would have handled it differently, but I'm I, I here's AP. He's like, listen. We wanted to, you know, they try a creative plan first down that I really liked, got stifled. Next plays right up the middle, third down they're throwing. He said, well, we know how good they are in under two minutes. We were trying to eat some time off the clock. Okay. I would not have done that, but I get it. it you can at least put some sensical value in that decision. But there were so many play calls. I mean, I know I ruffled a lot of feathers last week being very blunt. I mean, you guys, if, if if you heard the video, I got laughed at by a lot of my colleagues, not all by any stretch of the imagination, but a lot of them, when I said to Luke Getz, it's not your fault for turnovers, not your fault for penalties, and not your playoff fault for execution mistakes, but you are the boss. So it is your fault. How are you going to fix it? I mean, I wasn't attacking the man. It was just being truthful. This team is too talented to be two and six. Look at the defense. By the way, thank you. God, Robert Spillane came back. He had an injury earlier in the game that looked brutal. But somehow that guy, he is just all guts. He came back. Thank God. But you're looking at a team that's down Coons, Marcus Epps, Christian Wilkins, all three of them stars. You you lost Max for a game, and the defense outside of the Carolina game has been good. This defense played really good today. If they would have any help from the offense, I mean, the only time the offense was effective was late in the game when they had to take risks. Oh, by the way, that's happened before. And when they come out at the beginning of the game and, and the plays are scripted, and then when the script ends, they have no, no ability to improvise. I, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. 
and I'm not, you know, people say, well, you got, you got to fire Getty. I'm not calling for that. <clears throat> Who are you going to replace him with? Okay. We've talked about Edgar Bennett. We've talked about Scott Turner. We've even talked about Joe Philbin. But the entire time that I have covered this team for five years, people have asked me, when are they going to change who's ever calling the plays that day? I mean, are they certain that a change would 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 fix something? And I'm certainly not advocating for a change at this point. Now, who knows after next week in the natty? I mean, they're heading up to the natty to take on the, the Bengals. But this is the, if I am not a fan. But if I was a fan of this team, this would be embarrassing. This is not a team without talent. You just played the world champions to within seven. And quite frankly, second year in a row here on this field, you should have beat them, but you beat you, you, you weren't good enough to beat yourself and to beat them. That's fair. That's completely fair. That's not taking a cheap shot at anybody. That's just stating facts, especially when you look at last week where you're going against the worst rushing defense in the NFL or one of them, and you throw 44 times and only run 29. And, oh, by the way, you were having success running the football. <clears throat> and, oh, by the way, the coach admitted, yeah, I would have liked to run the football more. That's all reality. I'm not going to blame Luke Getze for a player execution mistake. <clears throat> I'm gonna, <laughs> excuse me, I'm not going to blame him for unforced errors of a player or a turnover or that's a player, but he is the offensive man hired for this job. This all sits on his desk. And remember what I told you, Nick Saban told me years ago, if you're allowing it, you're coaching it. Well, we're seeing the same thing every week. Are we not? I'm asking you, are we not? Of course we are. <clears throat> I mean, don't give me chicken poop and sell me chicken salad. This was terrible. Now, to the players' credit, and I'm going to give them a ton of credit, there ain't nobody in that locker room, on or off the record, pointing the finger at anybody. That ain't happening at all. At all. Not happening. But... This defense has got to just literally be asking themselves, what do we got to do? We just need some help. I mean, arguably, after about halfway through the third quarter and the fourth quarter at Baltimore was the best. And what happened there? AP looked at Getsy and said, let's go. Go on the attack. Okay. Where was the attack after the scripted plays tonight? Now, I want to make it clear. I'm not calling for anyone to lose their job. First of all, you're not going to have time to change anything. But I am making it clear next week's the bye week after they go to the natty, something has to change. If you're AP and you're a first year coach, Something has to change. Remember I talked about responsibility. I mean, it's ultimately, I mean, everybody that works for me, if they fail, Hondo fails. Some of you, and maybe I have, I don't now, thank God for my bosses at Sports Illustrated. I, I don't work for people like this, but every one of us has worked for people where the boss wanted to blame everyone else. That's not the real world. Every organization, whether it's a family, whether it's a football franchise in the NFL, whether it's a media company, a gas station, or wherever you work, every organization rises and falls on leadership. We are, I've shared this story before. I'm going to share it again. Bobby Bowden, having lunch with Bobby Bowden, the legendary Florida State coach. And we talked about a myriad of subjects. We spent several hours together. And I asked him, I said, as a reporter, I want to be as fair and as good as I can. 
explain to me when I'm watching football, because I knew what I thought, you know, when is it on coaching? When is it on players? He talked about when you repeatedly see the same mistakes, that's on coaching. He talked about when one player is making a mistake, that's one player. But when multiples, that's on coaching. I mean, this isn't brain surgery. I mean, I'm sorry. Clearly, Luke Getzey knows how to call plays. Look at his scripts. They're usually incredibly successful. But but you, you can't play off a script. This is in Hollywood. Regardless of what the conspiracy theorists say, it's, this isn't rigged. This is reality. This is realville. You're going against the world champions at home. You have a lead. You're in the game. And you can't punch it in with four shots from the three. That's like saying you can't get full at an all-you-can-eat buffet one mile from me on the freaking strip. That's ludicrous. And two games in a row. Now, the rookies, plenty of penalties. And you want your rookies to grow. But multiples now is getting out of hand. They got to grow up now. I mean, let me just read you some of this, okay? Total first downs, Chiefs 23, Raiders 15. Third down efficiency, World Champion Chiefs 75%, Raiders 46. Fourth down efficiency, Raiders 50%, Chiefs didn't go for it on fourth down. Total net yards, 334 for the Chiefs, 228 for the Raiders. Okay? Now, I'm going to go down here, and let's talk about penalties. The Raiders had five for 32 yards. Chiefs, eight. But still big ones. Big ones. But here's the stat. 32 and a half minutes time of position for the Chiefs. 27-30 for the Raiders. Five more for the Chiefs. The Raiders have to be able, you know, you see that great bootleg from Gardner. It's a beautiful play. Okay. There was another creative play where the ball gets tipped. I like the play call a lot. And if it had been just a little bit better pass or a little bit of elevate pass, a little bit of elevation, a little dump pass where it go over the guy's hands, it would have went for at least a first down, if not more. That that's not on Luke Getzi. That's on Gardner. Not going to blame Luke for that. That was a good play call, and they set it up good. But if you're going to pass on third down, go for it in first and second. You got less than two minutes and a chance to drive. But here's the thing that that stands out. Okay, that bootleg play, great play. You know, you can you have a mobile quarterback with Gardner Minshew. You can call designated quarterback runs. There are things that you can do to create space to eat clock. You know, you can go four wide and call a quarterback draw. You can do, you know, quick, just quick hitches. You can do quick slants, digs, wheel routes. Just, just saying. And I don't mean just a quick one-yard pass to the receiver. You, know, you can do some wheel routes to get your, your running backs down the field. Alexander Madison can catch a football. You can create. I'm sorry. I will never blame a coach for player mistakes. But is there anybody that saw this game that isn't scratching their head a little bit? Okay, let's talk about this. Raiders, Tyree Wilson tonight had one of his best games. He had a sack tonight where he just showed off his speed and power. He got Mahomes. He was literally being held. Matter of fact, there was a penalty on the play declined, but he still got to Patrick. 
Um, again, last year was a red shirt. The Raiders never intended. You can go back and watch the video from the night of the draft that he was picked. They intended last year to be a red shirt. So technically for him, because he wasn't healthy all year, this was just their intention when they picked him was that 2024 would really be his rookie campaign. I thought it was a really good night for Tyree. Had a good visit with him in the locker room. He's coming. He's not there yet. Nobody's saying he is, but he's coming. But let's let's just look at this. I want to I want to read some things to you. Okay. Raiders. Gardner was 24 of 30. Had a 118 quarterback rating. Okay. Jacoby Myers, 6 of 7, 52 yards and a touchdown. Brock Bowers, 5 of 5. Good job by him. 58 yards, leading receiver. Madison, 5 for 5, 29. I mean, they like to do dumps, but can you imagine if you'd have got him on a wheel 8 to 12 yards down the field? DJ Turner, my guy, 4 by 4 for 4 with a touchdown. And let's give Gardner credit, two touchdown passes but sacked five times. Amir Abdullah, one reception on two targets. Shanker had uh, one reception on one target. Let's look at uh, rushing. Madison, 15 yards, 14 attempts. 14 attempts, 15 yards. Tucker, seven yards, one attempt. <laughs> Turner, one attempt, four yards. Abdullah, one attempt, two yards. Zamir, two attempt, negative one. They, they weren't going to run the football. So what do you do? You pass the set up the run. Now, let me just look at this for a minute. You ready for this one? With all those numbers, the Raiders threw 27 times, ran 21. Huh. Huh. Trayvon Merrig with another great interception tipped by Jink. Andre Cole, I mean, Andre, Andre, AJ Cole, phenomenal. Daniel Carlson, phenomenal. But you knew all that. They always are. Let's just look at some of the stats. Ready for this one? Robert Spillane led the team. 13, uh, 12 tackles, excuse me. Merrick, nine tackles. Diablo, seven tackles. Jacorian Bennett, six tackles. Jack Jones, five. Calevon, four. Hobbs, four. Snowden, four. Tyree, three. Crosby, two and one. No sex. I mean, this wasn't a defensive loss tonight. And, and what this defense has to do is compartmentalize. And that's very difficult. But they have to just literally put everything out of their mind and say, we are doing our job. But this offense has got to get fixed. I'm going to tell you, Raider fan is mad and should be. Players are angry. Coaches are angry. But I'm going to tell you who should be the angriest is Mark Davis. Mark Davis. And this guy, all he wants to do is win and has proven he'll write any check. He just wants to win. That's it. And, you know, even more than Mark, Raider Nation should be frustrated. It is a continuous circle, circling fire squad. There is too much talent on this team. As poorly as they played today, they just almost, they should have beaten the world champions today. They beat Baltimore. Those are facts. Those are absolute hard-boiled facts. I am going to address one play. There was a play where Thayer Munford was out uh, 
as a wide receiver. Now, many of you know, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> there are things that I'm not allowed to tell you because of my access that we get where we get to see plays worked on. And I am not going to address that play. I have no problem with that play because I have understanding of what they were trying to do. Um, I'm not going to say anything else. I have no problem with that. I can understand why everyone else does. But based upon what I know, I'm going to give a mulligan on that one. And listen, you can give a mulligan on that, unforced errors, everything else. But it still doesn't mean there's not a ton of responsibility on the offensive coordinator. A different day, different opponent, same exact result. That's the truth. I want to take a second and give a huge shout out. A lot, Jay, tonight before the game. Literally met and took pictures with hundreds of you was so much fun to meet all of you. You guys are so kind, so warm. I want to give a very special shout out to Lear. He had met him and his beautiful bride, beautiful lady um, from Wales. They flew all the way in from Wales. And he told me a story. But when he was a little boy living in Wales, <clears throat> he had watched the Raiders. And he sends a letter to the Raiders about just being a kid fan from Wales. <clears throat> One day he comes home from school. And Tom Flores had sent him a team picture, a bunch of Raider stickers, just a bunch of stuff from, from Tom Flores. And he's been a lifelong fan ever since. And he flew over to the game. It was so great to meet him. He brought a wonderful gift for Dexter and, and my wife and I. Thank you so much to Lear and his beautiful, precious bride. And I just want to thank you all. To all of you I met today. I'm not going to try to name everybody because, quite frankly, I won't remember everybody's name and somebody's going to get hurt. And I'm not trying to get anybody's feelings hurt. But it was just great. When you see Shannon and I, please make sure you say hello. We always want to meet you. A bunch of you messaged me because you didn't get to meet me and I had already come in. I apologize about that, but it's a work day for me. But I always want to get out there and meet you guys. You're my bosses. So from here at Allegiant Stadium, the question is, Everybody, well, the question is, what's wrong with the Raiders? I believe the answer is everyone pretty much has a clue. And it's an offense that's completely ineffective. The defense may not be the 85 Bears, but it's plenty good enough to win. And, and the way they are playing, down Marcus Epps, down Christian Wilkins, I mean, down Malcolm Coons is phenomenal and all the other injuries they've had phenomenal i other than carolina i won't put one ounce of this on the defense it's offensive and the raiders now are two and six nine games to go nine it's embarrassing the amount of talent on this team for them to be two and six that's just a fact now it's their time. They have to fix it. No excuses. They have to fix it. We're going to see what they do. Next week is a monster week. Because that bye week, especially where it's coming, is a blessing. And they got to find the answers. That's why they're paid the big bucks. Now they got to.